Girl, look, I don't know how bad you need a babysitter, Anila, but I'd have kicked my mom up out of there. Y'all ready to talk about it? Get the music! Oh, yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. back. I drop a play of life is nothing. It ain't working out. Now, no debate or fuck discussion, bitch. I'm walking out. I'm walking my down is money. I ain't loving. Let you toss it out. Flip my weave and walk it out. Look how I just bossed it out. Now, come on, baby. Why you bugging? We can't talk it out. I keep it moving. I ain't tripping. Lost another spouse. I'm just a boss. It's in my blood. No, I won't scream or shout. Grabbing my keys. Cause, oh, yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. Back with another video. And we're here to discuss married to medicine. I don't know the episode, girl. But let's call this Anila. Kick your mom up out of there. I'm pretty sure she got somewhere else to go. Girl, please. One thing you're not going to do in my house is come to my house and make it dirty. But we'll get there. So let's get into it. The episode opens up. Dr. Heavenly go see Daddy at his second location. Daddy got a second location. Shout out to Daddy. All right, Daddy. You know, he's loving it. He's he's a business owner, got his own practice. You know, he said he didn't like the ER no more. It was too doggone stressful. He happy to have his own space. Dr. Heavenly said it's good to see a black man when he's successful. And it is, especially when it's daddy. You know. But um <laughs> he's he's happy. Uh she basically asked him how he enjoyed being at Simone's crib the other day. And he said he didn't enjoy it at all. Because he really just wanted to Bring everybody together. Like, he wasn't even off no bullshit. Like, he really just was trying to be a peacemaker. But, you know, he he wasn't able to do that. Daddy, everybody's not going to be able to get it. And, and that's okay. And then Dr. Heavenly Hollis, oh, well, I want to apologize, Daddy, because I was wrong and I should have listened to you. Yeah, you should have and you didn't. What else? But, you know, Daddy was like, it's cool. Because they did the flashback of him saying, when I tell you to do something, you do it. That would have turned me on. Ooh. Anyway, uh, she like, girl, look, I like this new location, daddy. Let me come and work for you. Don't have another daddy because when I come in there, I don't want to see her. Anyway, don't try to be another peacemaker either. Let's move on. We move to the next scene. Dr. Contessa, uh, Dr. Scott asked Dr. Contessa about Heavenly and asked how she talked to her. And, you know, Dr. Contessa was like, you know, I am beefing with the heifer, but she's losing her mama. So I got to have respect and, you know, empathy enough for that to where I'm not even going to deal with it. I'm going to be here for, you know, because that's most important at this uh, at this moment. But Dr. Scott said, child, look, every time you get around this girl, y'all having another fight. It's like round one, two, and three. And then she said, well, no, we just like sisters. That ain't sisters, fam. Y'all be fighting to the damn debt. Uh, but she does need a pass. And she said she's going to give her a pass because, you know, she's experienced what it's like to have her mother not be here. And she doesn't want that to be, you know, Dr. Heavenly's other stressor at that moment. Um, I'm here for it. If you really care about somebody, when stuff like that happens that are major life-changing events, you drop everything. Uh, but she says that she didn't know about her mama. She says she didn't know about it until after Quad basically said something. So she feels really bad about that. But Daddy is on the flip side telling um, Dr. Heavenly, you know, I get you going through a lot, you know, but... Because basically his whole thing is, listen, I lost my grandmother. That's the closest person that I've ever lost. So I couldn't imagine. But Dr. Heavenly actually took responsibility and accountability and said, you know, it is true. I'm losing my mind, but they still don't give me a, a right to be treating people the way I treat them. Shout out to Dr. Heavenly for being doggone uh, mature, if it makes sense. But she said, you know, it's, it's just I got to do better as far as how I'm dealing with people. But... We uh we find out from Daddy that Scott reached out to him, you know, and checked on him, you know, via uh Daddy, and you know they don't have no issues. It's just the girls. They good. They ain't got no issues. Uh, but Dr. Scott was there to give them the support, and that's what he wanted. Um, we move to the next scene. Audra and Dr. Martin is planning their wedding. Now we learned a lot about Dr. Martin and Audra. Audra met her husband, or uh, yeah, her husband, because they went down there to the justice to the peace. Now they're going to have an actual ceremony. But she met her husband down there at the Howard University homecoming. And he said he met her on Saturday. They went out on Tuesday, and he ain't been home ever since. Child, they've been together like glue. We found out Audra is from Ghana. I can tell she had African, you know, in her because, I don't know, some, somehow I could just tell the Africans. Is it crazy? But yeah, she we found out that, you know, even though she grew up in America, her mother had a very strict Guyanan, is that how you say it? They had a Ghana tradition in the house. 
So she wants her wedding to have Ghana traditions in it. You know, she wanted to sit on thrones. Her mama loved the fact that her husband is a doctor. That's all she needed to know was that her husband was a doctor. And, uh, yeah, that's the backstory on this uh, stuff. So now we find out, child, they owe fifty to sixty thousand dollars over the budget. That's you know how much money you gotta have to be over budget and just be like, we'll take care of it, girl. Please, I, listen. I'm not really here for big weddings. I used to want one as a little girl, you know, watching Cinderella and stuff. But the grown adult me who got responsibilities, girl, I wish the hell I would spend a hundred thousand dollars on a party, cause that's all a wedding is, girl. Please. Anyway, oh uh, yeah, they owe over the budget, and uh. Hopefully y'all can go and get this taken care of. Because the lady said you got a $40,000 uh, bill that you ain't paid yet. Girl, let's move on. Anila is down there with her mama in the car. They go and drive to see Anila's new place. She wants to open up this hair place. And um, Anila's basically telling her mama how she's happy that she's there. She was like, because listen, I don't trust everybody with my kids. Like, you being a grandmother, you could be here. Like, it's going to be best and beneficial for all of them. But we find out, even though the mom only been there a week, girl, it's been a disaster. The house been dirty. Mama don't clean up, basically. Oh, I don't know if I can take that. I think that, that would be the one thing to tell me my mama got to go. I'm sorry. But we get to the place, girl. They're doing an Indian hair store. Uh, basically, Anita said after she had her two kids, her hair started coming out. And she started putting uh, real authentic Indian hair in her head. And once she realized how, you know, it made her feel, she wants to go into that type of field. I'm here for it, Anita. That's cute. And so all the black men out there who say black women are the only ones wear weave, you a damn fool. Say what I said. Anyway, they get to the venue and they meet her business partner, Dallas, and her fashion designer. What was his name? Did I write the name down? I didn't. And the mama noticed the flop, the towel on the floor. Now, don't get me wrong. That towel was bad. That was a badass towel. And the mama said it's too expensive. Anila says her mama is just negative. Everything her mama do is negative or say it is negative unless it's something she came up with. Everything is going to be negative. Oh, uh, why would you bring her there? Just like I wanted to know why you brought her to the old shop party. None of this is making sense. Uh, I would not have brought my mama there if she was going to be negative. I'm sorry, but they go see the rest of the place. The mama hollering, this 2,000 square feet, this too big. And the business partner saying, ma'am, this is going to be grand. She want a kitchen in there. That man said, we ain't putting no damn kitchen in here. You don't cook where you selling no hell. The mama still want her kitchen. Girl, it ain't your house. I mean, your business, Miss Anila Mama. Let's move on. Dr. Jackie is down there at the office. And she talks to her people about the dumb, crazy, po the gay, dumb, crazy podcast. Dumb gay podcast. That's what it is. Dumb gay podcast. So apparently she did a podcast, you know, uh, with these two uh, women. I'm assuming they're both lesbians. I think they are. And basically, she said they hit it off after they did the podcast. I'm sorry, y'all. This is so ghetto. But she said they hit it off after they did the podcast, child. And we find out that the lesbian women ain't had their dog on coochies check for 20 years. And like Dr. Jackie said, the biggest misconception among same-sex females are you don't need to go to the doctor because you ain't getting penetrated. False. You can still get ovarian cancers and cysts and all these other things. You need to check on your lady parts, fat. Just because you ain't getting, you know, beat up, getting eat up is just as bad. That's what all Dr. Jackie trying to say, girl. You, you can still get all kinds of stuff. HPV, she said from scissoring. Girl, I know that. I know you get HPV from scissoring from the labia's touching. That's what she said. That's why I say scissoring. That's crazy. But Julie goes back there and says she ain't been to the OBGYN since 2014. But she go ahead and get checked. Dr. Jackie saying your body is doing good. Your, your lady parts are well. She said, actually, you a med school student's dream because the way your body, you know, you could touch everything. Now, I don't know what that means, but I can kind of gather where she was going with that. Shout out to her with the med school student body. That's what's up. Um, We move to the next thing. Dr. Karen is hosting a male pampering day. He said, because, you know, men don't normally get to pamper each other. You know, we don't get pampered by our wives. So I want the guys to come on down. Me and Dr. Eugene, we back cool. So I want to do a Dapper Dan pampering day. They had good food. They had the liquor on flow. Girl, it was popping. I was like, okay. Bourbon tasting. They're going to have hand massages, back massages. You can get injections. You can get anything you want. So the guys arrive, and he tells Dr. Martin that he's going to do injections. <laughs> Dr. Martin said, you mean like edibles? That's what I was asking Dr. Martin because I didn't understand it until later on. But when Dr. Eugene arrived, Dr. Karen asked the guys if, if anybody wanted some injections before Dr. Scott got there. 
Because at least one of them had to try. The men ain't here for it. The men say, baby, we don't do that. Let me say something about black men. Black men don't like going to the doctor, period. Even the doctors. Let alone Botox, they ain't going to do that. Oh, uh, Anila getting her confession and say some of them need it. I don't know who she was saying, but y'all get it. Read between the lines. Oh, uh, Anila, shut up. Because like Dr. Karen said, you was his dog on crash test dummy. And like she was, look, I haven't had a wrinkle since I've been married to this man. Because he's been injecting my forehead, you know, the whole time. And he said he got all the wrinkles because you're driving them goddamn crazy. I believe it. But, uh, yeah, they ain't trying to do all that. Dr. Scott finally gets there and he sees, uh, what's her name? I mean, not what's his name. Uh, what's, uh, what's Dr. Jackie's husband name? Dr. Jackie husband called. Girl, I'm not about to, I'll be drawing blanks. But she sees his car, he sees his car there and takes a picture and touches the car. Now, what we find out is, um, he said, you don't touch my wife or my car. Well, Dr. Scott touched it and took a whole picture. Fat, we got to see what's going on. But he go in there and tell him he ain't touch his car. He lied. He lied. Anyway, basically, Dr. Scott comes in and he daps up Damon, Daddy Damon. He said, because they ain't got no beef. He learned his lesson. He don't jump in no more beefs from the last time. And they did the flashback. Yeah. That he, yeah, he done learned his lesson. Basically, uh, Dr. Eugene asked the guys if they, the, if they wives got an old shot. Because uh, Toya has been, you know on some other stuff lately. Now, the men didn't say if they did or they didn't because they don't want to share their sex lives with a, a, another group of men because they smart. But then, Dr. not Dr. Toya gets in the doggone confessional talking about, see, since I got the old shot, he's been lazy. I've been having to do all the work. Dr. Eugene said, girl, why is you on this TV screen capping to these people like you this crazy person in the bed? You really not. You like average at best. He was on his Kevin Samuels. I said, blue. I need Dr. Daddy to get Damon, not, I mean, not Damon, to get heavenly together like that, too, because she be talking doggone crazy. But Dr. Damon said that he did try this bio-T. It's another uh, natural way for them to get their libido back. And he said he had it before. And Dr. Heavenly said she wanted him to have it no more because he was over there like he was in the eighth grade. And y'all know what eighth graders do. Sock. Lotion. You get it? Uh, Dr. Heavenly said, girl, I couldn't keep up with it. Girl, if I had the doggone keep up with Daddy with that girl... I would be dead. I, 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 he'd need three, four women to keep him up. I don't want him getting at it again. But anyway, she not want him to do that. Dr. Eugene basically says that um, he, he brings up the fact that you, you miss a lot on life when you work too hard. And he's thinking about a change of pace in his career. You know, the ER has been a lot for him. Uh, and they did a flashback of him saying, I'm walking through mud. That's because your wife is dragging you through the mud. I'm sorry. But Dr. Damon basically says, um, you can do good outside of the ER. Everything don't rely on the ER. But Eugene said he's going to make some changes. You know, he, he's got to make some changes. He got to make sure he's okay spiritually, mentally, physically, and all that. Now, speaking of spiritual, Toya goes to see her spiritual advisor, Lady C, to go say how she's been stressed out and, and depressed. Because her husband ain't giving her everything that she wanted or was getting in the beginning. Well, Toya, he would be giving you more and being more emotionally present if you didn't have the man working 14 jobs so y'all can keep up with the Joneses. I don't care. Toya, let me tell you something. I thought it was very insensitive and disrespectful for you to get on this TV and act like you just... I'm not saying you're not going through nothing. But to act like you just such a victim because your husband is working. Meanwhile, you're not doing anything to contribute. To that situation. Somebody else said that a, a few seasons ago. They couldn't see. I think it was Heavenly. She said she couldn't see herself just sitting back. Watching her husband just work his fingers to the bone. She would want to help. And listen. There's nothing wrong with being a stay at home wife. And a stay at home mom. I, I hear a lot of people online saying that's what they want. But listen. That is a full time job. You have to be present for everybody in that house. Even your husband. You're going to give more being a stay-at-home mother than you will out here working. It's just what it is. And I don't think it's fair that you get to sit down with your, with your spiritual advisor, Toya, and be like, oh, yeah, because, you know, my kids, they even said they saw a difference in me. And I know I work everything for my kids. But how do I be emotionally supportive to Eugene when he's not emotionally supportive to me? Well, he can't be emotionally supportive to you because he's out there working 15 jobs. Fat. By the time he come home and take a nap and put the next outfit on, he ain't got time for emotions. Help your man, girl. That's all I'm saying. If you, I ain't saying you gotta go get a job, but find a way to help your man. 
I, I don't like that. I'm sorry. I, I just, uh, I don't like that. I, that drives me crazy. It really, really does. On the flip side, Dr. Eugene goes see Daddy to get some inspiration because he's looking at other options. And they have a conversation and, you know, Dr. Eugene, not Dr. Eugene, Daddy says that when he first came in, uh, Dr. Eugene was super gung-ho about doggone ER, ER medicine. And he was like, he was over it. But he decided to get his own stuff and do his own thing, and he's doing extremely well since. Well, now, Dr. Eugene is definitely inspiration. He was like, you know what, because I need that. I, that's why I'm here, for you to inspire me to do something different. Now, it takes Dr. Daddy uh, back a bit because he knows how excited and how much Eugene loves, you know, the ER medicine. He was like, uh, you know, he was just shocked. He said, hell, he used to tell Dr. Eugene, pipe down, bro, like you're doing too much. But Dr. Eugene basically says he didn't have a plan B. He only had a plan A. And going into the ER medicine, especially after the pandemic with all the stuff he went through, and I'm, I can only imagine the stress level of a physician during the pandemic, he said his plan A is breaking his heart. So he needs to look into other options. Dr. Daddy was like, listen, I understand. Um, there are other options out here. Like, look around. There are other options. I do think Eugene should open his own practice. I do. I do because he seems like he's a hard worker. I think he'd do extremely well. I really do think he'd he do well. And going to see that inspiration from Daddy, I think that's something you needed as well. Uh, on the flip side, Toya's still over there crying, talking about she ain't getting what she need. Girls, shut up, Toya. We don't want to hear it. Um, let's move on. We move on. Anita is, comes downstairs to find the house is dirty. Mama ain't cleaned up from the dog on earlier during the day. The churn, the breakfast, the, everything is all over the place. Food, crayons, shit is all over the place. Anita was like, Mama, you ain't clean up? And she said, girl, I don't do no cleaning. I, I cooked. That's about it. And she said, but I need you to do all of that. And then the mama said, well, Miss Gomez didn't do that. And then, like Anita said, yes, she did. Miss Gomez did everything. And that's what I kind of wanted. But mama ain't here for it. Mama said, girl, look, I'm not, no. We not doing all that. No, no, and no. Now, Toya, not Toya. Anita's so pissed off, she goes upstairs. She got a photo shoot about to happen. She upstairs in her dog on blog room. And here come the mama, trying on clothes, driving Anita crazy. So Anita was like, mama, sit down. We need to have a conversation. The mama sits down. She said, girl, what? And Anila said, mama, you know, I really need you to be here helping out a little bit more. You got to clean up. You got to do this, that, and the third. We set rules. You're not following the rules. And I don't think that it's right. Mama told Toya, and I told you, why I keep saying Toya? Mama told Anila, girl, first of all, I'm the mom. I don't follow your rules. You follow mine. And Anila was like, well, hold on, mama. You in my house. How the hell you want? And then furthermore, I am 42 years old. Why am I in here letting my mama tell me what I can and can't do? Mama ain't here for it. Mama said, girl, look, I, I know I'm here to help you take care of these badass churn, but you will not tell me what I will and won't do. Ain't gonna happen. Anila is over there saying, mama, please just consider it. The mama said, girl, I will walk out the door. Act crazy. I don't need to be here. You need me. And Anila said, well, why don't you just try to change? Mama said she ain't changing. Get it how you live. Take it how you want. If you want me to change, change to a new bitch. That's what mama said. Girl, Anila, I have told my mama, thank you for your services. I got a call outside. You and your husband, aka my daddy, pack your bags, fat. Y'all getting the hell up out of here. You better find you a new Miss Gomez, uh, Anila, because this ain't going to work. She ain't cleaning up. She ain't trying to hear nothing. Your mama been negative. You done said all these horrible things about her. I get it. You don't want anybody around your child. Get you a new Miss Gomez because this ain't going to work. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode of Married to Medicine. Girl, look, I don't know how Anila doing it. And I don't know how Dr. Eugene doing it. That's why when they say that that man said his biggest regret was marrying Toya. I believe in frustration one day he said that shit. One day after coming between four jobs, he said, I'm tired. I regret marrying this heifer. But again, you got to step up and step down and put your feet down to be the man and make sure things get taken care of accordingly. If not, she going to keep walking here like a dog. You see a sucker, what you do? Lift it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you <coughs> hoes later. Bye. Mr. Carroll, how you give the voodoo doll time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo doll is? That nigga you just had up here.